So I had in my notes to go ahead, and we're, we're, now we're going to switch gears. So we're basically, we've talked about stress and strain, both, both tensors. We beat them to death, right? So now we want to talk about how we use them to solve problems, okay? And so we're going to derive basically the field equations that we, you know, will utilize stress and strain in to compute solutions to later on, all right? And uh, I don't, you know, I had in my notes to go through at least conservation of mass today. I don't think I'm going to get through it. So I just want to talk about a sort of one tool that we're going to use uh, when we do, uh, well, at least the conservation of mass, mass equation. It's, it's something called the material time derivative, okay? And I want to, I want to give you a little illustrative example. The people who do fluid mechanics should probably be really comfortable with this. If you have a nozzle, if we have a nozzle, and let's say there's a constant pressure back here. So this is a steady state problem, right? It's a constant pressure, okay? And we're going to track some field variable, say the density, along a streamline, right, as it, as it goes along. So, you know, from, we'll call it P1 to P2, okay? Well, since this is a steady state problem, the density doesn't change with respect to time, right? Steady state. The density doesn't change with respect to time. But, I mean, if, you, if you're familiar with a nozzle, I mean, or, or this type of problem, you know the density does, in fact, change. Even in a steady state problem, it does change, right? The, I mean, that's sort of how a nozzle works. Like, the gas expands, and it speeds up the flow. So, for the gas to expand, the density does change. It just doesn't change with respect to time in this, in this particular scenario, right? So, what it changes with is, you know, not with the, the density with respect to time is zero, but the density with respect to space, right, so if this is x, is not zero. <clears throat> and so, if we go back to, you know, the way we defined, now we're going to talk about velocity field, right? So, if you remember, our velocity field, and this is the one we used when we derived like the, the, the velocity gradient and the rate of deformation tensor. So that velocity field is a function of little x, which is a function of big X and time, right? <clears throat> and so if we compute just the ch through simple chain rule on this guy. And then what we get is, is this. So it's just, just applying the chain rule to this. We also might write it like this. And those of you who do fluid mechanics, this will look familiar, right? So this, you get this convective term out here. And so I just want to, because we're going to use this later on. This, when I write big D DT operator, this is the material time derivative operator, right? And so that's distinct from, you know, just the basic spatial time derivative. So, and the reason it's called material time, we didn't really, it's, it's with respect to the Lagrangian frame or the reference frame. So it's the, it's the time derivative with respect to the reference frame, as opposed to, you know, so reference or Lagrangian, you know, I may have not made that distinction before, but it, that, that frame is also sometimes called the material frame, as opposed to the deformed or the spatial or the Eulerian. 
So I'm sorry there's all these names, but unfortunately that's just the reality. I mean, if you go to textbooks, if you go to read papers, different authors will use different names for the same thing. So it's useful to just sort of know and be comfortable with all of them. Okay. So I think that's all we have time for today. I just wanted to point that out. So just when you see me write big DDT, know that this is what I'm doing, right? So if that's V there, then this is, this is the, what I mean. <clears throat> and we'll see that next time when we talk about a different, couple of different ways to formulate conservation of mass. So in the next few lectures, we'll, we'll be doing conservation equations, mass, momentum, energy. Then we'll talk about constitutive models. So that's how you relate stress to strain. We'll talk about elasticity first. That's probably what you already know. But now we're generalizing it to three dimensions, right? <clears throat> and then we'll talk about a little bit of plasticity. And then we get into poroelasticity. And then we get to solve these things on a computer. So, all right. So uh, your first real homework assignment will be posted in a few hours. And it'll be due next, next a week from today. So just check the website uh, later today, and there'll be, you know, so basically just to compute some of these things, you know, practice doing some of these operations that we've talked about here, and there'll be at least one little really simple programming assignment where you basically just make a plot, you know. <clears throat> okay?